Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp series. We are in chapter one talking about the basics of software testing and we'll be continuing ahead with our same segment that is 1.4 test process. The next tutorial to talk about today is the test monitoring and control. In order to understand this particular stage, which is test monitoring and control, we would like to quickly recall some of the things which we discussed in our previous tutorial, that is test planning. One of the activities under the test planning was to say that we want to select the matrices for monitoring and control. But when you talk about monitoring and control, we do need the set of matrices. So here we'll be talking about the three major terminologies or in fact independent activities called as monitoring, matrices and control. Now let's understand it in a very simple and easy way considering that you are all trying to understand what could be all about monitoring control and how does matrix contributes there. So assume that I'm traveling between an option or location A to location B. Now, I am unfamiliar and I have the mode of transport is my car and I'm traveling by road between point A or location A to location B. Now, the only way I can reach there is using the navigation system. The navigation system is pretty much like the Google Maps, the Waze or any other option which you have in built in your phone or maybe your multimedia system, which will allow you to reach to that particular destination. Now, while I'm planning, right? While I'm planning, I have to find a schedule that I must be reaching the destination at around 1 p.m. Now, in order to reach there from the put point number A, that is location A, it says that you are going to take an hour's time, right? So my schedule says that you need to drive for an hour to drive between point A to point B. So I will start my journey by 12 o'clock, to make sure that I reach there by 1 p.m. Now, as per the plan, I start the journey at 12 p.m. and go ahead. But on the journey, during the journey, I may see deviations. For example, I may run out of fuel, I may get uh, misguided on the directions, like I may take the wrong turn, left or right, when the lady says, hey, in 200 meters, take the next left. And what if you don't concentrate on that? Probably you're listening to music, watching the roads and sort of things. So you may miss out the turns and you get deviated. Then the plan is by the particular, you know, uh, maps is to read out to you to bring you back to the track so that you can continue your drive and reach the destination, right? But similarly, we talk about the same thing in our planning process. During the planning, we have defined a schedule and that has defined timeline and set of activities to be performed. Now, there could be set of deviations which may happen, right? Here, for example, in our driving scenario, we had options of getting deviated by the directions, like taking a wrong turn or running out of fuel, your tire getting punctured, like it's getting flat and you may have to wait for some time, all right? And there are many other options, right? Due to the traffic jam and unexpected uh, blockers on the road. Same way here, you are relating the activities like the test data is not available on time, maybe environment is not ready on time, or you do not have the requirement documentation to get started with preparation of the test cases on time. There are so many reasons, right? A defect being reported is not resolved on time, so you are blocked, you are delayed. All these are your deviations. Okay, now the point here to talk about is how will I come to know about a deviation? How will I come to know that if I'm following the plan or I'm getting deviated from the plan? That's what the job of the matrix is. Matrix are set of calculations. The one is example here displayed on the screen, but there are many of them. We have hundreds of them to calculate different parameters, different dimensions of our test process. There are five primary dimensions just for your kind of information. That is test, defect, coverage, uh, you know, risk and confidence, which can be measured with hundreds of matrices available. In our driving scenario, the matrix was the Google Maps or maybe the Waze or whatever maps you're using, right? So that matrix has to be kept an eye on while you drive. 
The same way here, in order to monitor the ongoing progress, I need to have a matrix in place and which should be evaluated on daily basis, alternative days, or maybe weekly basis. You can define based on the frequency of that deviations to be monitored or tracked, and you can evaluate these matrices. So monitoring is the process of measuring the progress on the project, keeping an eye on the project that how are we progressing? You can define a milestone of certain number of days to determine at what points we should be capturing the matrices. For critical items, it could be daily as well. For non-critical items, it could be alternative days or maybe weekly ones as well. So your test manager will take a call on this to determine selecting the matrices first and then evaluating on certain milestones, right? So monitoring is all about keeping an eye on your progress and keeping a track of ongoing progress on the project activities, including the test processes, right? Now, the matrix will do the job of keeping an eye on or telling you that where are you right now. So one of the example here which we are taking is to talk about the test execution rate. Now this matrix is to calculate how many test cases have been executed compared to the number of planned test cases to be executed multiplied by 100 as it is a execution rate. It will be measured in the percentage, right? Now assume that during the test planning, the test manager selected this matrix to be evaluated during the test execution phase. So for each and every phase, you have different set of matrices, which you can probably, you know, probably define it right here at the test planning and define it that when and where it will be used. Now, for example, my plan says in order to complete the job of test execution, I need, I have five days and there are kind of, you know, 40 test cases or say 50 test cases. Now each day you should execute at least 10 test cases to complete it in five days. As very simple calculations, right? You have got 50 test cases to be completed in five days. So the matrix or the plan says that you should execute 10 test cases per day. Now at the end of each day, I will use this matrix to calculate whether did we execute 10 on 10 or not. So for example, day one, it says 10 on 10, 100% execution rate. Day two, 10 on 10, 100% execution rate. Day three, it is eight on 10 due to any reasons. Now that's 80% execution rate. Now this matrix is trying to tell you that your plan is getting deviated because today on the day three, you had only 80% execution rate. Now the manager will first try to deep dive and understand what went wrong why we could not do 100% executions on the day three. Now, say for example, there are scenarios where you don't have an answer to uh, justify that why it went wrong. For example, maybe the data was unavailable, there might be a defect which was blocking the further executions or the environment was not prepared to execute that, right? There are a number of things. Okay, we will talk about this later. Now the point is, you got to know that there's a deviation. What will you do? The next set of action is, called as control action. Whatever you do based on your understanding of the deviation is called as control action. Now control actions are basically corrective actions which are taken based on the deviations observed, right? So I can have certain standard, you know, predefined control actions. For example, the issues, the deviations which are common in a project, which we are already aware of, and list them down that, hey, if this kind of thing happens, we take this as a control action, right? The test manager initializes this right in the planning phase. Or some of the things are taken on the go, which are, which are things which cannot be planned. But any corrective action taken as an output of deviation or as an observation of deviation is called as control action. Now the control action in our case would be taking the right turn again, or taking the step that on day four, the execution should be 12 on 10, depending of yesterday and the new 10, right? That's how you can curb the gap. That's how you can overcome the deviations or it will just keep on stretching the legs, right? So even if you talk about the drive part, if I have a deviation like the tire getting punctured, then I have a stepney. I just replace the stepney and keep moving. 
If I am trying to run out of fuel, I have a fuel indicator which tells me, hey, you're about to run out of your fuel. So the next fuel pump, next station, you just go and refill your tank and continue your drive. You don't have to hold back. You don't have to stay back there and probably like wait for some help, right? If you take a wrong turn, you again get redoubted. That's what is control action. So putting it all together, in overall test process, we just don't plan things. We also plan that how we will monitor the ongoing progress, which is going to tell us that how close we are or how aligned we are to the plan. And if in case we observe that we are getting deviated, we have got set of control actions which we take to overcome that deviation. How will you get to know that you are getting deviated as well with, with help of the matrices. So you select the matrices right here in the test planning phase. So test monitoring and control is basically a part of the test planning itself, not a separate activity. But yes, it happens throughout the life cycle, throughout the life cycle, right from the test planning itself till the test closure happens, you have a monitoring in place, matrices to track different activities and control actions to be taken if a deviation is observed. I hope that pretty much makes you understand that what is the process of monitoring and control as a part of the test process. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.